Hands up if you've heard the notion that having bigger pixels on a camera sensor means less noise in your image. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain why that isn't really true. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me in this video. Today, I'm going to explain why in real world usage, the size of the pixels on a camera doesn't actually have any real bearing as to how much noise is going to appear in your finished photographs. Now, to be fair, there is a very sound principle behind the idea and the notion that bigger pixels is going to mean less noise. So the bigger pixels theory is that if you have a camera sensor and you put more pixels on that camera, then obviously each individual pixel has to be made smaller in order to be able to fit everything in. So then having a smaller pixel means you don't detect quite as much light. So your signal level isn't quite as high, but your noise level still remains the same. And then you get a noisier picture. And that is true apart from one big issue that kind of nullifies this for most still photographers. And that is downsampling. Now downsampling is essentially just reducing the size of a picture. But if you reduce the size of a picture by say a quarter, that means it's got to lose three in every four pixels. So every four pixels are going to get squashed together into a single pixel. And that generally renders most noise obsolete. It kind of almost filters it out. You only ever really see the true level of noise off the sensor in non downsampled images. This is ones that you're viewing at a one to one ratio. So if you go into Lightroom, Photoshop or whatever software you're using and you magnify to 100%, you're seeing each individual pixel and you're going to see all of the noise. In that instance, then yes, that is where bigger pixels means less noise. But pretty much nobody ever views a picture at that scale. If you think about it, any electronic display that you ever view is probably no more than a 4K resolution, which is about eight megapixels. So any picture that you take and view on a display is going to get scaled down to 4K or 1080 or whatever the resolution is. Then having bigger pixels might mean a better signal to noise ratio, but it also means you've got less pixels to downsample. So you can't filter out the noise as well as you can with a higher resolution sensor. So the only time you'll ever really see the true level of noise in a camera sensor is either if you're printing at life size, which you'll probably be never, or if you are shooting video that isn't downsampled footage. So if pixel size in the real world doesn't have a bearing as to how much noise we see in an image, then what does? Sensor size. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, utter crap, Dave, that's garbage. There's no way that could be true. Let me show you the specs of 10 different cameras that I have here. So for these, I'll give you the camera model, the size of the sensor, the resolution of the sensor, and thus what the size of each individual pixel is. So the cameras I've got, a7 III, a7 R3, and a7S II. Now, the reason why I picked these is because they are all full frame cameras. They're all essentially stable mates of each other. So they're all from the same manufacturer. So most of the technology inside them is going to be pretty similar. And in terms of resolution, the a7 III, 24 megapixel, the a7R3, 42, and the a7S2, 12 megapixel. So we're essentially looking at the a7 III having half the pixel size of the a7S2 and the a7R3 having half the pixel size of the a7 III which if the theory of pixel size to noise is true, there should be a huge difference between these cameras. Then we've got the Canon 5D Mark IV, which is also a full frame camera of a 30 megapixel resolution, which means the pixel size of that is 28.69. Then I've got a couple of APS-C cameras. So I've got the Sony a6500, the Canon 80D and the Nikon D3400. All of these are 24 megapixel APS-C size sensors. The only thing to remember with that is that the Sony and Nikon APS-C sensors are slightly larger than the Canon APS-C sensors. So the Sony and Nikon both have pixel sizes of about 15 microns, whereas the ATD's pixels are 14 microns, so slightly smaller. We then have the Panasonic GH5, which is a micro four thirds that's 20 megapixels. So it's lower resolution than the APS-C's, but it's also a smaller sensor. So the pixel size of that is just over 11 microns. Then the last two cameras, the Pentax 645Z and the Hasselblad X1D50C. 
Now, both of these are 51 megapixel cameras, so the highest resolution of them all, but they are all medium format cameras as well. So the sensor size is physically much bigger. So the pixel size for both of those is about 28 and a half microns. So in a one-to-one -one viewing, pixel size versus noise, what we should see is the A7S II have much better noise performance, followed by the A7 III, followed by the Pentax, the Hasselblad, and the 5D Mark IV, followed by the A7R III. We should then see the A6500 and the D3400, followed by the ATD, followed by the GH5. However, if we look at the DxO Mark scores for ISO performance, what you actually see is a very different story. I should clarify that these figures refer to the ISO figure that the camera can reach before it hits a certain noise decibel level. So the higher an ISO the camera can reach before it hits this particular noise level, then as you push it more and more, it's going to control the noise better and better. So in terms of pixel size to noise performance, there is no correlation whatsoever. The A7S II, in theory, should have walked away with it into the distance, but it hasn't. The 5D Mark IV, in theory, should be on par with medium format cameras, but it's not. So what's going on? Well, there might not be a correlation between pixel size and noise performance, but there is a clear correlation between sensor size and noise performance. So the medium format cameras are by far the best at ISO performance, followed by all four full frame cameras, followed by the APS-C, followed by the Micro Four Thirds. Now, the noise that we experience in our pitches can be caused by a multitude of things. Generally, it is interference within the camera. So the sensor is going to detect the light and create an analog signal. That signal then needs to be pulled off the sensor, converted into a digital signal, created into a picture, and then saved to a file. But whenever you run information through wiring, it starts to introduce interference. So even at your lowest ISO, the camera still creates some interference in the background. There's still some noise kind of mashing up the signal a little bit. Then as we increase the ISO, essentially all we do is we're not capturing any more light. No more light is entering the camera. All increasing your ISO does is essentially turn up the volume of the signal. However, the problem with that is when you amplify the signal, you also amplify the noise as well. And this is what we then start to see in our finished pictures. Now, one of the biggest causes of interference within the electronic circuitry is actually heat. That's why camera manufacturers go to extreme lengths with their heat control, heat sinks, their heat management to try and keep the circuitry as cool as possible. And things like astrophotography cameras are generally nothing more than a sensor on a giant heatsink because they want to remain as cool as possible to get as clear an image as possible. So having a physically bigger sensor means that the circuitry can be spread out more, which means that you're not going to get quite as much interference. The difference in noise performance, say, between the full full frame cameras or the APS-C cameras is down to the manufacturer individually. So how well constructed is the circuitry? How cleanly a signal can they retrieve from the sensor? Then also, how good are their processors? How good is the software algorithms that are designed to try and filter out that noise? Because all three A7s have fairly similar noise scores, all of which are better than Canon. And that's just because the technology, the software that's inside the Sony cameras is better at handling noise than what is in the Canon. Unless you are shooting undown-sampled video or you are printing life-size still images, all of the difference in noise performance that you're ever going to see has nothing to do with the size of the pixels on the sensor. It has to do with the size of the sensor itself and how well the camera's been made to control the noise. What are your thoughts and comments on the matter? Is this something that surprised you? Is it not? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.